And I want to um, discuss the most important aspect of this kind of impending situation first. Um, tell me a little bit about the preparations that you're making both as mayor um, of Beaufort and kind of what you're telling the community. How, give, us a, give us a sense of the scene that's, that's uh, taking shape there. Sure. Well, uh, the primary emphasis right now is evacuation, trying to get as many people out of here as we possibly can. This is a really large, powerful storm, and we really don't know the, the specific impacts of the storm, uh, but we want to get people evacuated upstate. There are facilities to take people. Uh, there is transportation to take people upstate as well, so that's our primary emphasis. Now, we're not naive enough to think that everybody's going to leave, uh, so we want to make sure that people that stay understand that they're going to face extraordinarily high winds. Uh, storm surge is going to be a factor for them. They're going to have to deal with power outages. And oh, by the way, in the middle of the storm, uh, if they need emergency services, those emergency services will not be available to them because the, our first responders will be hunkering down until the storm passes a, a, as well. So, so we really uh, we want to get as many people upstate as possible, but also understanding that that folks will. Uh, stay for a, a myriad of reasons. Can you tell us what, what the Duke Marine Lab is doing? Because I know it's very, very close to the shore and it's very low lying. Are there special precautions being taken place by re, uh, being undertaken by researchers who are safeguarding their, their equipment or their, their research? Right, so Pivers Island is on inside the town limits of, of Beaufort and uh, the Duke Marine Lab and a NOAA facility, the second oldest NOAA facility in the United States, uh, both share this Pivers Island, and, and as you indicated, very low lying area. So uh, the the Marine Lab has has buttoned up as tightly as they can, moved all the equipment up to second and third floors of some of the the facilities there, and evacuated everyone. So so we are concerned about the the Duke Marine Lab, obviously, and some of the science that's going on there. Uh, I'll give you a classic example. Dr. Zachary Johnson is working on a, a algae al al uh, an algal project where he's got this uh, algae farm there that it's, it, it, it's exposed. So so we really don't know what the impacts of that specific uh, project is going to be as this storm rolls through. I know that you work, uh, your PhD work involves drones. Um, are, are, are you or anyone in your lab undertaking any research either before or after the storm to kind of assess the ecological damage that, that is caused by the storm? Yes. Uh, so Bob, we're, we're able to measure uh, the movement of barrier islands at very fine scale. We're talking about centimeter scale here. So we were able to do a before and after of Hurricane Matthew. So we've already mapped out the Rachel Carson Reserve. There's an island called Bird Shoal that we're watching uh, as it as it moves. So we've already done the survey in advance of the storm. Once the storm passes and the coast is clear, then we'll be able to go back and map again to, to watch these barrier islands move naturally. Yeah, so is that is that sort of a, um, I don't want to say a silver lining, but I imagine that your research will help kind of quantify some of these dynamics um, as we go forward after the storm after the storm clears out, and we can maybe think about how how to best manage some of these areas such that it can provide a natural buffer and when the next storm comes. That, that, that's right, and, and there are other things that we're we're looking at, uh, like the maritime forests. We're we're starting to see recession of maritime forests. Are these indicators of sea level rise? Well, we think so, but we don't know absolutely at this stage.